Hi. In this video, I'm going to continue on from my previous one, where I want to use various divs in order to create layouts. Particularly, I want to center content on my page. So I've got my setup here. I've got uh, a number of different divs. Each one is uniquely colored with background colors and borders to make them stand out a little bit better. And now I'm going to go ahead and do some very typical web design techniques. For instance, I've already got set up for a sidebar in a main content area. In my code view, we can see that my sidebar and main content area are simply two divs that are inside of a container div, which I've called container2. I want to go ahead and make sure my sidebar is to the far left and my main content area is next to it. So what I will do is I'm going to go, f I don't have, oh there we go, I've got a rule for my sidebar. So far I've just given it a border and some margin. Well I want to go ahead and modify this a bit. So I'm going to edit that rule and I want my sidebar in the box category to float to the left and while I'm here, I'm also going to give it some width. I'll go ahead and give it 180 pixels. And as soon as I click Apply, we should see that change. There we go. So my purple border sidebar is now floating to the left. And it's only 180 pixels wide. And when you float something to the left, whatever follows it slides up to its right, assuming there is room. OK. Now I'm going to go to my main content area, and I'm going to edit that rule. And for this one, I don't want to set the width. I want the main content area to expand and contract to whatever space is necessary for now. So I'll leave that as it is, but something I will do is I'm going to adjust its margin. I don't want my main content area to have five pixels of margins on all, five, on all four sides. So I'm going to uncheck that. And for top margin, I'm going to go ahead and make that a zero. For right margin, I'll go ahead and put that as a zero for now too bottom margin is a zero. For left margin, I'm going to be a little bit more specific. For my left margin, I want it to be equivalent to the width of the item that it's wrapping around. So my sidebar is 180 pixels, so I should put in 180 pixels for my left margin here. Now if I truly want some space in between my sidebar and my main content area, then I'll go a little bit more. Now if I want 5 pixels of space between those two, then I will use 185 as my left margin. 180 for the width of the sidebar plus an extra 5. I'll click Apply and we start to see a little bit of a problem here. Notice how my borders are overlapping. I'm not accounting for the thickness of the borders here. This will happen from time to time. And in real life, you probably won't have these really thick borders on there anyway. I'm going to leave it like this for a moment. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to do a File Save. And I want to check these out in the browser. So in Firefox, here's what I have, just like we saw. And in Internet Explorer, here's what we have. So now we can start to experiment with, with this consistent problem. Notice that my purple border sidebar is a little bit down. It still has five pixels of margin on all four sides. So I think I'll start to remedy that first. I'm going to go to my sidebar, and I see there it has margin of five pixels. I'm going to go ahead and just take that and delete that property. Now as soon as I've done that, that gets them at least side by side, but there's still overlap of the border. Well, because I've got five pixels of border, five pixels of border there, so that's 10 pixels I hadn't accounted for. So I have some choices. I can go back to my main content and start to work this up. Instead of 185 pixels for my margin left, what about 190? There we go, that gets them side by side and flush. And if I want more space, I'll go to 195, and that gets the five pixels of space that I want. Let me go ahead and do a Control S to save. Back to the browsers. Things are looking good in Internet Explorer, and things are looking good now in Firefox. So those borders are affecting my decision here. Now, if I take the borders away, then I can start to adjust this amount to that uh, one that 195, and I can adjust it down perhaps to 180. 5 or 180 even, depending on the look I'm going for. But I've definitely got my sidebar. Now, check this out. If I were to narrow my browser window, notice how my orange container, my main content area, is expanding and contracting based on its available space. 
So by default, a div or block element will take up the full width available to it unless we've told it otherwise. My sidebar has been limited to 180 pixels in width, but my main content orange border div has not been limited in any way, so it will expand and contract as necessary. Now my container 2, the green border div here, does have an important use. Even though you might say, you know what, I don't want that to be there. I would like my sidebar to be flush left with the header and the footer, and I want my main content area to be flush right with the header and the footer. I don't want to have that obvious container. Well, a container doesn't need to be obvious to still, still be a tremendous value. The reason I like having this container too, containing my sidebar and my main content area, because it's a really simple way to help ensure that my footer will always be below whatever's longest. Let me give you an example. If my main content area happens to have a lot of content, as is pretty common on some web pages, notice how that simply stretches the height of my container too, and of course my footer area is simply forced below my container too. This will ensure my footer is always on the bottom. And of course, what if on some pages you don't have a lot of main content, but you've got a lot of information in your sidebar? Menus, um, you know, if it's a blog, it certainly could have a lot of information in the sidebar. Reason archives and things like that. Now with the sidebar, we're going to have a slightly different reaction because my sidebar is a floating element. So this is going to look a little weird at first, but let me go ahead and copy the content in my sidebar and then just paste it repeatedly. Okay, let me do a file save. So now we can see, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't look good at all. Well, my sidebar is floating and it's confusing some other elements on here. I've done a save. Let's see how this looks in IE. There's the problem. And let's look at it in Firefox. There's the problem. So with a floating element, we have to be a little bit more aware of other uh, things that are going on. Now my container can easily be expanded to take care of this, and there's a nice simple little trick here. Um, let me jump back over to Dreamweaver. And in fact, one of the easiest ways to do this is probably just to activate my main content area div. Notice I just clicked on the border there. And then I'm going to just get my little eye bar and click right below it and press my Enter key. And see, now I've got an insertion point below my main content area. Now, remember, with the way my HTML is structured, I've got my sidebar div, and then I've got my main content area div. So I'm below both of those, even though it looks like I'm to the side in design view. And I'm going to create a paragraph here. Technically, I've already got a paragraph. By pressing the Enter key, Dreamweaver has created a paragraph for me. And I'm going to give this paragraph a unique class that I might want to use multiple times. So there's currently no class applied. Let me go to my CSS panel. I'm going to create a new rule. And this is going to be a class selector. And I'm going to call this no float. Okay. And uh, it'll be for this document only. And the only thing I'm really going to do with this is I'm going to go to the box category and I'm going to do a clear both. The clear property is used to prevent something from wrapping around a previously floating object. And then I'll click OK. And then I'm going to select this paragraph. I'll just simply click on the, uh, the P in the tag selector. And I'm going to apply my new no float class. And watch this action. It'll happen right away. There we go. By putting in that no float paragraph, it's extended my container to div beyond the floating object. And this would work even if I had my primary sidebar on the right side versus the left. So now I've got this little paragraph always down there. Now if you don't like the space that it's creating for us, well then we can certainly minimize that by putting zero margins or even negative margins on this paragraph. But I'm going to leave it as it is for now. And now my con container 2 has expanded to fill that up. 